Now let's take a quick look at MPI, the message passing interface library. This library is available for many different programming languages, the traditional compiled HPC languages C, C++, Fortran, as well as for scripting languages such as Python and R. It's also available in Java, in Julia, in MATLAB, and a few other languages. The general idea of MPI is that each processor will run exactly the same copy of the code, and then different processes will exchange information via messages, usually via the interconnect, the network between different nodes in a cluster, or via shared memory, if two processes happen to be on the same node. Here is a simple pseudocode that shows how two processes can exchange information in MPI. Let's imagine two processes. Processor 0 has variable A, and processor 1 has variable B. At the very beginning, each process will run an MPI function to find its current rank or its current ID. If the rank is 0, it will send this variable A to processor 1. The next step, this processor 0 will be receiving variable B from processor 1. On the other hand, if I am processor 1, I'll be receiving variable A from processor 0 and then sending variable B to processor 0. Here it's important that we have pairwise messages. We are sending on one processor and receiving on the other, and vice versa. If we modify this code to switch the order of send and receives, let's say, on processor number one, then on each processor we'll be sending first and then receiving next. And this modify code might work or might not work at all, depending on the MPI configuration. If a send command is a blocking command, that is, if send was implemented in such a way that it requires a confirmation on the other end, then send will not proceed until it receives a confirmation that the message has been received. In that case, if we have send on processor 0 and send on processor 1 being called first, this program will deadlock. That is, both processes will be busy sending a message and checking multiple times a second that the message has been received. But there is nothing to receive the message on the other end, because a receive command can only run when the send command completes. This is an example of a deadlock. If you SSH to a node that is running one of these MPI tasks and you do top, you will see that this task typically consumes 100% of CPU resources. And that means that the CPU is simply busy checking for the receipt confirmation. If each processor is running a receive command first and then a send command, then this code is guaranteed to fail because there is nothing to receive until a message was sent. This is example of point-to-point -point communication in MPI when you have two processes exchanging data. You can also have collective communication in MPI where more than two processes are exchanging data. The following pseudocode shows you an example. Here we're running it on some number of processes, let's say five processes. Exactly the same copy of the code is being run on each of the five processes. First, we initialize the variables sums and partial sum. Sum is the global sum, that is our end result. And partial sum is a copy, individual copy of the partial sum on each processor. Then we're calling the MPI function to find the total number of processes participating in this run. Then we're calling an MPI function to find the rank or the ID of each processor. If rank is zero, then the current processor is a master. And then if rank is one to four, then it is a worker. Then on each processor, whether it's master or worker processor, we compute the partial sum. Then we have to implement by hand in our program one fifth of the total summation. Then if I'm a master processor, I receive partial sums from workers. Then I compute the total sum from all partial sums. And then I print this total sum. Else, if I'm a worker processor, so my ID is from one to four, then I'm sending my partial sum to the master processor. This is a typical example of a collective communication.
This table shows you various topologies of communication you can have in MPI. Here we have a very simple example with uh, just four processes. In the first example, first line, we have a pair of send and receive commands. This is the usual point-to-point -point communication. Here we have a variable A on processor 2. And then we're sending it from processor 2 to processor 3. Processor 2 will call MPI send, whereas processor 3 will call the MPI receive command. If two processes are exchanging information, then you have two options. Either you can call a pair of MPI send and MPI receive commands on each processor, or you can call a single MPI send receive command that will change variables between processor 2 and processor 3. Variable A will be sent from processor 2 to processor 3, and variable B is going to be sent from processor 3 to processor 2. The next line is MPI broadcast, and here we have a single variable stored on processor 2. It's going to be broadcast to all other processes. MPI gather is the opposite operation when you have individual variables on each processor, and then all of them are being gathered on a single processor. Because you had four scalars initially, these four scalars will be collect collected into a vector on processor 2. MPI scatter is the opposite to MPI gather. You have a vector on one processor, and then it's being scattered across all available processes. MPI all gather is similar to MPI gather, except that the end result, the vector ABCD, is being collected at every processor. MPI reduce is very similar to MPI gather, except that we also perform a mathematical operation on all incoming numbers A, B, C, and D. And the most common operation is summation. So you have partial sums coming from all other processes, and then you are receiving these partial sums and compute the total sum on processor 2. And MPI re all reduce is similar to MPI reduce, except that we are computing, we're doing summation or some other mathematical operation on all processes. This table shows you a subset of commands available in MPI. And of course, the full MPI library is much richer than this table. Uh, in MPI 2 standard, there are 130 or so commands. As you can see, MPI is a rather low level library where you have to make sure that you are sending messages to the right processes and you're organizing all of these by hand. This is prone to mistake and to bugs. And that is why debugging MPI programs can be an issue. But fortunately, there are parallel debuggers that will help you with this process.